In Creo Parametric, you can use the Design Animation option, or DAO, to create animations of exploding and unexploding your assemblies. And I'm going to show you some setup, then I'm going to show you why you can't just do a screen recording of toggling the exploded view button from the ribbon on and off. But first, let's talk about setup. When I am creating these animations, first off, I like to turn off the display of any supplemental text in the lower left-hand corner. You can see that we have information regarding our explode state, style state, and appearance state. To make that invisible, go to File and Options, and then go to System Appearance, and we can expand Graphics. This text down here is controlled by Secondary Highlight, so I can use more colors to change that to my background screen color. I typically use pure white. Oops. Let me hit the Tab button to toggle to the different RGB values. And that way, as I'm doing that, you can see that the text disappeared because now that secondary highlight color is the same color as my background. So that's good for the first thing. Second thing, here I've got the In Graphics toolbar. I do not want to see that. Let's again go to File Options and then Window Settings. Here we have the graphics toolbar settings, and for the main window, it's set to show on the top. Hey, I'm going to change that to do not show, and then click the OK button. Now, a couple other things that you can do in order to maximize the screen area. You could use the drop-down list or somewhere it's in here. Like if you right-click on the ribbon, you can choose to minimize the ribbon, which is also the same as Control F1. That way we have more screen space for our model. And another option that you have is to use this button or F11 to toggle to full screen. And that way we are only seeing our tabs for our combination state. So those are some things that you can use. I'm going to undo those. Let me use F11 to go back to the full screen. And another thing that you could set up if you are trying to use the toggling of exploded views to make your animation, if you go to File, Options, and then Entity Display, if we scroll down in here, we have a setting underneath Assembly Display Settings where we are showing an animation while exploding the assembly. Right now, the maximum seconds is set to one. We can change that to four. Also, you could set it to follow the explode sequence if you want, but I typically do not do that because I usually create my explode sequences out of order. So now I can click the OK button. I am not going to save this to a configuration file. And this is why toggling the exploded view button doesn't work if you are just going to try to do a screen recording in order to capture exploding and unexploding. So right now I'm going to toggle from the exploded view to an unexploded view. Okay, so you see that big shift that happened in the location of the model? For some reason, when you toggle between exploded and unexploded, it recenters the model inside of the graphics area. Let's do that once more from the other direction. So here it's exploding, and now then it shifts again. So you get this shifting that prevents you from having a nice screen recording of just toggling the exploded view on and off. So that's why we can't use that. Let me go back to my combination state that I already have set up. So because we can't just toggle the exploded view on and off, if you want to create a nice animation, you can use DAO for doing that. To access the design animation option, you can go to the Applications menu and then choose Animation. And this is one of those modules that is included with every license of the software, or at least has been for the past dozen or so years. If you have a really outdated license package, you might not have it. 
And right now you can see the animation tab over here. Let me point out a few different things. First off, let me take my model tree back up. If you go to the new animation drop-down list, there are three different kinds of animations that you can create. An explode, which I'm going to do in this video, a snapshot, or you could import from MDO the mechanism dynamics option. So if you've already set up a mechanism and created a playback, you can import that playback and use it as the basis for creating a brand new animation. Right now, by default, it is set to use and explode as the way of defining our animation. And there are a few other things in here that I'll show in other videos. You can specify on your timeline to apply a certain saved view at a certain time. You can also define certain components to go transparent, and you can specify the level of transparency from opaque to clear at certain times. Let me close out of there. You can also apply style states at different times. The other thing I'm going to do for setting up is defining my time domain. By default, the time domain is set to be 10 seconds. I'm going to reduce this down a bit. Eight seconds is good for my purposes. And here we have our frame rate. Currently, it's set to 10 frames per second. That gives us an interval of 0.1 seconds. I like to do at least 24 frames per second because of that's what cameras use for fooling the human eye. I should go a little higher than that just because 25 frames per second gives me a nice number for the interval rather than something with a weird fraction. And let's click the OK button out of there. By changing that to 8 seconds, it actually changed the time domain listed over here. Now, for displaying an explode state on and off, you're going to define something called a keyframe sequence. So I'll click on the keyframe sequence, and that'll open up a dialog box. And you could actually have multiple keyframe sequences on your timeline. For the sake of my simple explode, unexplode sequence, I'm just going to have one, and we can change the name over here, and I can call this my explode animation, just to use something better than the default name. And so then we have a drop-down list, and it'll have, by default, unexploded. You can always use the unexploded state of your model. And it'll also list any explode states that are defined in your model. And those will be in all capitals. And so I have the default explode plus one that I created that I simply called explode. So I'm going to start off with unexplode. And right now I'm going to have start off with unexplode at zero seconds. Let's hit the plus sign in order to add that in there. And you'll notice that it shifted the model. That's okay. I'll take care of that later on. And so then I can say, ah, oh, you know what? Let's go for then having it transition from this unexploded state to the explode state that I defined. And I'm going to have that kick in at three seconds. Now, one thing to be aware of, this is a little weird thing. Normally, any time in Creo Parametric when you're entering data into a field, you want to hit the Enter key. This is one weird one that you don't, because if you hit the Enter key, for some reason, it'll revert back to zero or something. So for that reason, I will use the plus sign without hitting Enter, and it shifted the model. That's okay. What I like to do is make sure that it is positioned at the maximum size in other words when everything is exploded that's when I center everything in the view over here and so we'll have it go to an explode at three seconds then let's have it go back unexploded at a time of six seconds again I'm not hitting the enter key it's a little weird thing about this dialog box and then I'll hit the plus sign so then I'll be unexploded at that point and then I'll just stay unexploded for the last two seconds in my time domain. Let me go back to this particular one. Just want to make sure that everything is centered in there before I create the playback. A few other things to note inside of here. You have the ability to remove or reverse keyframe sequences. Here's a checkbox so that it will follow the explode sequence as it is interpolating from one state to another state and you can also choose 
the interpolation for translation and rotation, whether you want it to be linear or smooth. So everything here is good. I will click the OK button. And here is my explode animation on my timeline. And then in order to create the animation or generate the animation, you'll hit this play button. And now we can watch as it starts out and we can see our components moving out. Now as it hits the three seconds, it was fully exploded. Now it's going back to the unexploded state. At six seconds, it is fully unexploded. And then it gives me a couple seconds of staying in that unexploded state. So this is one way in which I kind of make my explode animations. Let's say I want to change that. So I can click on the keyframe sequence and then right click. And we can choose Edit KFS. Now bring open the dialog box for this. Another way that I like to do this, let me select this one and let's change this to four and hit the plus sign. And I like to have it start off unexploded and stay unexploded for a second. So let me enter in a time of one and hit the plus sign. So I want it to be there for actually three seconds. So let me select this one and remove it. All right, here we go. Now I think I have what I want. Stay unexploded for a second and then we'll have it go from unexploded to explode over three seconds and then reverse that for three seconds and then stay unexploded for another second. Let's click the OK button. Now let's generate the new animation. Yes, I'm going to overwrite the previous result set. So again, for a second, it'll just stay in the unexploded state. Now we are taking three seconds to transition to the exploded state. Fully exploded, now it's taking another three seconds in order to unexplode. And then one last second at the end of the animation in order to stay in that unexploded state. So now that I am done creating my animation, we can go to the playback. And we can use this. We can crank up the speed and we can play it over and over in a loop as it's going along here. The, the more frames that you have, the longer it takes in order for this to play out on the screen. But again, you're just seeing what we already saw. Let me hit the stop button to end this. And now if you actually want to generate a movie, you're going to click on the capture icon, which looks like a disk. You can specify the file name that you want. Here's the format. Here's the default resolution that it is using. I'm going to use the drop down list to get the bigger resolution. And this is the maximum resolution available based on the size of this area over here. We've got our frame rate of 25 frames per second. You could also choose 30 or 50 from the drop down list. And here's the option to render this as a movie as it's being generated. If you choose to render the frames, then you can go to the settings where you have the choice for maximum samples or maximum time. Let me cancel out of here and then uncheck that box. I'm not actually going to capture this as a movie at this time, but this is the way that you can generate an MPEG or an AVI movie. If you choose one of the image options, I think it'll actually end up giving you an image at every one of those frames that you specified in the frame rate. So let's cancel out of here. So this is a way that you can use the design animation option in order to animate an explode state. And in other videos, I will show you how to use this for creating animations between different snapshots that you create in a mechanism, as well as different mechanism playbacks. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded.
Thank you very much.